Many people have heard of the idea of a triple threat. You know, someone who could sing, someone who could dance, and someone who can act. That's a triple threat today. But do you know who the first triple threat was? Well, you find the answer in Exodus 15, and the answer is Miriam. She was the first triple threat. She could sing, she could dance, she could play a musical instrument as well as prophesy. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Now, as perfect as she sounds, unfortunately, we see a little bit of her imperfection in Numbers 12, and it shows she had a little bit of racism. Uh, well, not a little bit. She had a lot of bit of it. Uh, the Bible says that she was Aaron's sister, and unfortunately, both her and her brother got to a point where they were upset with Moses. They felt like he was singling himself out to speak to the Lord and to lead the people, and they weren't satisfied with the positions that they had, the positions that the Lord had given them. So what they did was they murmured against Moses, and they got upset at Moses for marrying an Ethiopian woman. So this is so apropos of today, you know, there is a lot of racism that is being exposed now. Well, right here we have recorded in the Word of God, Miriam who was a prophet. I mean, she's labeled as a prophetess for the Lord. She was also racist. You know, she had her own uh, thoughts about this Ethiopian woman, this Kush woman that uh, Moses married and, and murmured against him. Well, we also have in Exodus 11, 1, a recording of the Lord hating murmuring. He hates complaining. That's uh, to him like not being satisfied or not being grateful, not being thankful for what he's given you. So he sees it as a personal complaint against himself. So because she and her brother Aaron complained, um, unfortunately, they both suffered punishment. It's interesting that they both murmured, but only Miriam was the one who really was really punished behind it. And she was punished by getting leprosy. And her brother, once he saw her, that her skin turned white, was very interesting because that means she wasn't white to begin with she must have been another color because the word recorded that her skin turned white so once it turned white her brother saw that and pleaded for her and started to repent immediately and so they both came to terms with repentance but because of that complaining and murmuring was so great and God hates it so much he kept leprosy on Miriam for seven days and then she was healed so while she was experiencing leprosy for seven days the children of Israel were stopped in their travels they were moving forward toward their promised land but because she had sinned against the Lord they had to stop and wait because there's a Hebraic rule that if someone experienced leprosy they cannot live in the camp with other people because it might spread so they had to um, put her away from the camp they had to separate her so while she was being separated and and waiting to be delivered and healed the end of the week from that everyone else could not move forward everyone else was stunted so this is very interesting to note because if there's someone in your life that is very close to you or in your family and they're not obeying the Lord and and they're displeasing him or maybe even complaining or murmuring against him it could affect you as we see here going back from that you know this happens a little bit later in her in her life which shows that even though she was a prophetess even though her ear was close to God and her lips pronounced the things that the Lord wanted her to she still had to work out her own prejudices her own thoughts and perceptions that were not right you know God didn't have a problem with Moses marrying this woman matter of fact I believe he set that up and I believe this Ethiopian woman that they were referring to was Sephora. And if you haven't watched my video on that, you should uh, take a pause and watch that now. It's very interesting. So going back to Miriam, reading Exodus 15, 20 through 21, it says, And Miriam the prophetess, 
the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and dancing. And Miriam answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. And looking at these verses, we see the first thing they identify was that she was a prophetess. Now, I did not find anywhere else in the word that she uh, gave a specific prophecy that was recorded, but it says that she was a prophetess. So I believe she had the reputation already of being known to speak the oracles of God because that's the first thing that they say in identifying her. The next thing is she took a temple in her hand. Now I researched temples and that is a ancient word for a tambourine. It looks very much like the modern day tambourine. So where she got it from, I have no idea. Maybe they had that already with them or maybe they took them from the Egyptians. But anyway, she took that in her hand and it's obvious and clear that she knew how to play it because she started to play this timbrel and she led all the women, it doesn't say some women, but she led all the women, which singles her out as a leader, which makes her you know, different from the rest because she's actually leading the crowd. It's not like a whole bunch of women just picked up instruments and started playing um, simultaneously. She led them, it was her first and then the rest. And so it says that they took their instruments and danced. So if she's leading this, then I would think that she's a choreographer because she's the one who's leading in the dance and she's the one who's leading in playing the instrument. So she's also a music composer as well. And then she's a lyricist because she gives them the lyrics to sing. She says, Sing ye to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. And so she has already given them these two verses, these two lines for them to sing. So we see Miriam not only exemplifying a triple threat, but her leading in all of these areas. And so I wanted to share with you the difference between a choreographer and a dancer, the difference between a composer and a musician, the difference between a leader and a follower, and the difference between a song leader and a singer.
And so I want you to think of this woman who's leading in all these aspects, what kind of mindset she had. I mean, it, it's amazing. They just came out of slavery just a few seconds ago. The Lord has just drowned all the Egyptians. So she's tasting freedom for the first time. Her and the rest of her people after 400 years, 400 years they're tasting freedom they're tasting newness and don't forget that they have plundered the Egyptians they took all of their wealth they borrowed jewelry and didn't return it so they have come out with great wealth they are they are adorned with jewelry and adorned with gold and silver and brass and bronze and so she's wearing all these things and she has the mindset of someone who's been new free you know often I think there's a lot of free people in jail and there's a lot of enslaved people walking around in in life you know walking around where there's liberty and they are as if they were one in jail one enslaved but yet there's a person who's in jail who lives like one who is free you know it's an amazing thing it shows you that freedom or slavery is thought in the mind that's truly where it is. So when you look at Miriam, who's come out of slavery just a few seconds ago, I wonder who taught her how to be free? Who taught her how to have a, a mindset of liberty? This is probably why she was a prophetess. She probably prophesied this freedom and lived and tasted it before she actually realized it with her life. Them having the favor of God you know upon them just destroying all of their enemies so that they could worship God in freedom and worship God the way he called them to this is the mindset that she had as she's going forth and leading all these women to doing all these wonderful and fun things dancing and playing and singing oh my gosh they were having like a theatrical party and so I hope these differences have assisted you in understanding how they could benefit you. You've seen the benefits of dancing. You've seen the benefits of singing. You've seen the benefits of playing a musical instrument. And I hope if you're not doing any of those three that you pick them up one by one and do them. And I hope you can feel and experience and live out all of the benefits that these three things bring you and so as we come to a close I would love to pray I would love to pray right now for women out there who want to experience what Miriam has experienced what Miriam led other women to do was to live in freedom was to live in joy and to express that joy through artistic means and so let us pray right now Thank you, Lord, so much for showing us the story of Miriam. And even though very few verses were attributed to her, very few verses were spoken of her, very few verses tell about her story. But we know she's like any one of us, you know, experiencing some negativity in her mind and her perception and having to have that corrected by you and having great mercy of coming back to the blessing of the Lord once we repent and turn to you you know experiencing great joy and this freedom and liberty you give by expressing it through dancing and singing and playing musical instruments I ask now Lord if there's any woman out there who isn't feeling free or who isn't free that you free them right now beginning in their mind starting in their hearts and then in their environment Free them, Lord. Show them that true peace and true liberty starts with allowing Jesus to come into their hearts. Let them open up their hearts to you now. Holy Spirit, come and fill them with your, your freedom and your liberty and your peace. And I ask, Lord, that these women that are experiencing a renewed freedom, you know, sometimes we are free, but we need to be reminded, hey, we are free even now amidst this a plague we are still truly free we are protected we are kept we are provided for so we are still free just like the children of Israel when they were experiencing all of the plagues that the Egyptians were going through they had 
freedom in their camp. While the Egyptians were experiencing the plagues, they weren't. There was light and all and plenty where they lived. And so we can look around in our environment and realize, hey, we're experiencing the same thing. We have the covering of the Lord over us. And if the Lord is not with us today, we ask him, Lord, come and cover us, come and protect us, come and provide for us, make yourself real to us and show us these things, these blessings you have for us in the midst of the plague today. And now that we're experiencing freedom and for some a renewed freedom, being reminded that we are free, oh Lord, I ask that you help us express this freedom. Help us pick up an instrument that we're inclined to play and teach us how to play it that we can glorify you. Teach us how to play it so that we can praise you. Teach us how to play it so that we can worship you. And as we dance before you, Lord, I ask that your spirit fill our bodies, our flesh, our limbs, and show us how to praise and worship and honor you with our bodies and dance. I ask that, Lord, we put aside the thought of, oh, we can't sing, oh, we're not trained, oh, we're not professionals, because there's an old African proverb that if you could speak, you can sing. If you could talk, you could sing. If you can open your lips, then you can sing, Lord. And so we don't have to be trained. We just have to go within our spirits and find that place where our hearts dwell with you. And then just start a melody. It could be one phrase. It could be one word. It could be one verse but something that we repeat over and over in sincerity to you and and praise you with it and worship you with it and glorify you with it so i ask lord that you give us an instrument you give us a dance you give us a song in our hearts that we may worship praise and glorify you with and i pray that this continue in our lives going forward and that we continue to glorify you in all these things. In Jesus' name, amen.